the corporate real estate market reacting right now? Well, joining us is Scott Reckler. He's the chairman and CEO of RxR, also a board member of the New York Fed, which I just found out meets every two weeks. They keep you guys busy. <laughs> they sure do. Scott, it's good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, let's start off just with occupancy. It's something we've talked about for quite some time, obviously, work from home being the key driver. But now we're seeing these layoffs. So where do things stand in terms of the marketplace? You know, they have seen uh, people come back to work. So we've actually seen a big uptick of people coming back after Labor Day. Still not to where we were. I would say at our peak days, we're maybe 70, 75 percent. The norm, about 50 percent. Clearly, hybrid work's a place that people are at. But I think, you know, as the economy has shifted to be more challenging, this tug of war between the C-suite and the employees has moved to the C-suite having a little bit more leverage of saying, we need everyone back at work, all hands on deck. Let's focus on driving our business. And from the employee's perspective, they want face time. They want the ability to, to ideate and be part of the team and then continue to grow with the company. Right. All right. So that's the reason why people may be coming back. But at the same time, if you're laying people off, you may not exactly. have a need for quite as much space. Are you starting to see any impact from these layoffs that we are starting to hear about, particularly uh, from the technology side? Yeah, so it's interesting the, the first three quarters of this year exceeded last year by 20 percent. But then I would say when we saw, saw the hiccup in uh, the U.K., things pulled back a little bit, almost like a pause. And I think everyone's sort of pausing to see, OK, what's happening with the economy? Is there going to be another financial shock? Um, how long does it take for people to recalibrate to the new interest rate regime? And so people are waiting this out. And my guess is until we get into the beginning of next year, you know, we're going to see much less activity. Yeah, well, give me a sense as to your view of the economy, particularly as a member of the, of the New York Fed's board. Where do you think we are right now? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the, the Fed's made it clear that they're going to slow down the economy and, and do what they have to do to fight inflation. And, you know, as, as you guys talk a lot about, there is clearly a lag between interest rates rising and the impact on the economy. And I sort of think about it as a pig and the snake, right? You, you have the, the snake and the pig is as interest rates increases. And the higher and longer they last, the more it's good, the larger it's going to be by the time it gets into the real economy and harder to digest. So I think it's going to be a choppy uh, 12 to 18 months as we go through that process and live through the demand destruction and resetting ourselves. But on the other side of that, I see a very strong economy coming out. When's of the other pandemic. side? How long to get I, there? I, mean, what I think are we it could be 12 about? to 18 months. But I mean, and you guys talk a lot about this, too. If you think about the level of investment in decarbonization and the digitization that's going on right now, the deglobalization, um, the lack of housing that's been built and the need to build more housing. And so there's a tremendous amount of growth potential, probably more than we've seen as a country since post-World War II, uh, as we get through this structural change. So we have this cycle we got to work our way through. And it's not a surprise, right? I mean, we flooded the economy with liquidity. The tech companies grew thinking that the surge in demand was going to last, and now they're pulling back. You said this morning with retail, right? I mean, again, excess inventories that everyone has to recalibrate sure. to get through. So we got to get this underbrush cleared. But once it's cleared, we should have a stronger foundation for long term. But how do you think about it as a key developer of various properties, particularly those for commercial use? Uh, you know, uh, are you willing to put capital to work now for future projects? Again, given the changing nature of work and the fact that many of these buildings may never be back to 75 percent occupancy. You got to be you got to be very um, focused and thematic on your investing. Right. So where are the buildings and product types? that are going to actually have the demand drivers on the other side, other side of COVID that will do well. And so in office buildings, that's limited to the, the trophy buildings, the class A buildings, the ones that are really well located. That's about bringing people back and engaging for multifamily. Uh, again, that's an area where there's still such a high level of demand. And frankly, the housing market being in the state it's in right now has put more people that are renting versus buying homes because they can't afford to buy homes where mortgage rates are, health care, Logistics. These are areas you want. What about to capital in. formation in a market like this? What about the ability to actually find the yeah. financing, given obviously rates have changed dramatically? Yeah, there's been there's been a real dislocation in the capital markets. To your point, and the, and, and I would say again, the last three months we've seen a significant pullback in liquidity, but that also creates opportunity. I mean, during the COVID in 2020, 21, we bought two billion dollars of multifamily in New York City as people were fleeing New York City, right? So you look for dislocation. Today, we're lending to people that are buying, you know, high quality multifamily buildings, but just can't get the financing that they normally would get. Uh, the same in terms of investing in office buildings to bring them up to the, uh, the positioning where they can compete. They don't have the capital. So there's going to be opportunities, but you need to get, be really strategic, really focused on what's going to be um, competitive in the post-COVID world.